But uh, that's also, like, at the same time, it looks kind of stupid because, like, why won't you just you get a shape of a body that is best fit for a practical use? And it's good enough. It's like a big, strong guy um, dying from heart disease. And just SARMs, just like, Ooh, I'm so angry at myself in the mirror in the morning. Ooh. And then, like, like, if you're just this big muscle up gearhead on SARMs, you gotta open a pickle jar. You can open that pickle jar. You gotta lift a car, you can lift a car. It's like, just mass, man. Just get big, that's a good principle. Just get big, just muscle, muscle, muscle. And, I, me personally, I like I might be huge one day, but that's only if it, there's, like at some point, I'm just gonna burn out too quickly if I'm too muscular. Like, realistically, you wanna be light, you wanna be fleet, you wanna be, not burn too many calories per, movement that you do um, a good size I'm six foot um, right now to 15 to 10 and like I could knock out a motherfucker like there could be the mountain that what is his name Bjorn there could be Bjorn and like if I had to fight him I'm not saying I'd win I'm not saying I'd bet on it but I could fight him. I could punch him in the face and he could get knocked out on the first punch. Um, and then like, I could still, I'm, I could still smash his liver or whatever if I practice my kicks more. I, I haven't pra been practicing my martial arts as of late. Um, I need to shadow box more. I'm pretty good at it. I'm great at visualizing. I have, some of the best technique I have this understanding of martial arts that is like just mostly practicing um, not like actual fighting but I understand how to move my body in all the fun most fundamental ways that would be the framework for me to get into a real fight that framework man changed my life like, I just feel so able to balance in my body, move around, just competently understand what part is like, this is going right, this is going wrong. Like, it's bloody amazing. It's bloody amazing. Good, chatty night and day, all day long, baby. We got the fireworks shooting up and we got bazingas, bazingas, bazingas. Because cash is money flowing out the mouth of me right now. And I'm going to bring you some Santa Claus stuff. Because I'm a St. Milloway. St. Milloway right here. Woo, woo, woo. St. Milloway, woo. Anyways, um, yeah. Like, I really developed into a healthy mindset, I think. The narcissism. But, like, it's like not narcissism. Because it's self-love, but it's healthy for the most part everybody's pathological to some degree with their narcissism and everybody has some degree of narcissism in them bigger smaller be without ego you can hold yourself in high regard or two you can do neither it really depends but me I understand from the bottom to the top Implicitly, not like articulatively, but just embodied, you could say, somewhat. I understand the greatness and the depravity, or the holiness and the depravity of the human mind so freaking well that I just have this self assured confidence. Well, since yesterday, today, uh, after my writing session for two hours, I just had this amazing difference. I was just doing deep work and it totally changed the way I think. Um, it's a big leap 
that I've taken today and I feel really grateful to all of the bloody people that got me here to where I am today. I feel hopeful about the future. I feel like I have realistic expectations that I can bloody finally help someone. I didn't know. I, I, the biggest thing is I was constrained because I didn't have enough time. I didn't know how to upload on this, as I mentioned before. I didn't know how to upload on this. I just had the recordings and it was kind of weird. And like I was using my phone and I only do like 30 minutes to almost an hour as far as and then it just filled up the memory way too quick and I would get flustered it's like what do I say in these next whatever and now I can just say whatever and whatever amount of time that I wish um well probably not more than five hours that's for sure um two hours is about max a podcast should go um 33 minutes is too short for this one So, what else? What is Tyler Miller have to say? Oh no. That's what I kind of like, though. I like not knowing. You don't know anything at all. I've learned to stay in that state, not knowing. Always good intention. See, that could be, it's like, was I just repressing all my stuff? And like, no. Genuinely, like, I was a good kid. I was always the delightful one. I was the happy one. Meanwhile, like, from... The age of... Like, probably, like, third, fourth grade, I realized I couldn't talk to girls and I didn't really talk and I, that was really lonely that was really freaking lonely but it taught me how like I am like one of the most independent men on this planet like I know how to exist without the without women normally people just went for that draw at some point more than me like I was totally isolated from like I didn't even I was just like what the fuck is it like to talk to a girl until I was like in high school and then the first year of high school I really started hanging out with this group of girls and that totally changed a lot of what I see about the world that was cool that was really cool that was the last year and I made friends with a girl I totally ruined it by trying to ask her out now that I think about it if I would have just kept quiet would it just maybe developed into a relationship or not but I ruined the mystery by by uh, just anyways either way like generally you're supposed to treat everybody as a friend and you shouldn't even have indignant you can have indignant thoughts but you shouldn't have indignant urges and sensations you can think about whatever you want but the emotion that is elicited during what you think about and then like at some point like you're just indulging yourself either way if you think about something at length for long enough, I suppose. But, like, I get, I, I was really lonely at school. I was super lonely. And 
like I had some friends and I had plenty of friends. I just never invited them over. Not even, like, there was, if there was people in the neighborhood, I'd hang out with them, and they would sometimes come over to my house, but I always thought my house is lame, and I always wanted to go over to other people's houses. And, like, all my friend had Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, my God, that was my favorite game ever. It's still one of my number one games that influenced my life. I have these dreams. I have these amazing dreams about how you could make a Star Wars Battlefront game that is, just blows any game out of the water. I got so many ideas from dreams. I got so many ideas from dreams. And, like, I just need to get in a fucking studio. And it's like, I'm going to tell you what the fuck I think. You need to make it in art. And then, like, what? And then billions and billions of dollars. Like, holy shit. Like, I'm feeling good about myself. Like... I just want to help everyone. I don't want the money. I just want to help everyone. And I understand that, like, to some degree, yeah, I could buy an ice bath and sit, or an ice tub and sit in some ice if I got some cash flow going. I get a sauna if I get some cash flow going. I can, uh, I can get a bow. I can start going out. I want to hunt. Um, I did this vegan thing, vegetarian thing for like two years, like almost never broke it to, at some point pretty early on. And I was vegetarian for like two years. And like my idea was I was going to hunt my own food. I'm going to learn how to respect fully go out and do the work and understand what it takes truly the beauty and the meaning of the difficulty of going out and hunting and doing something difficult. It's bloody difficult to go out there with just a rifle and go hunt something, much less a spear or a fucking knife or just your fist, which you could probably do with enough people. Um, but, like, I was vegetarian and I went, I went, to, went, I was vegetarian, and I wanted to hunt my own food. I think I ate fish once. I went fishing once, but no, I didn't eat the fish. I didn't catch any fish while I was doing that. I, yeah, I didn't go fishing while I was doing that, I think. But, like, wanting uh, to do that, I wanted to get a bow, I wanted to get an air rifle, I wanted to be the guy who, like, there's going to be a civil war popping up, I want to be armed, I want to be dangerous, I want people to know that that uh, that I'm dangerous, and, like, I want to be the first guy that when someone fucking is a shooter or some shit, they, like, shoot right at me, and it's like, there's the guy with the weapon, there's like, bow, 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 bow. And, like, I do whatever I gotta do to try to save as many people as possible. Like, that's... Uh, I used to sit there for a long-ass time in class and just fantasize if there's a school shooter. School shooting. I almost wished for a school shooting then, so I could have an opportunity to just, like... I already knew what I was gonna do. I was either gonna hide in the classroom and wait for them to break in and then try to attack them. Or I was just, uh, I think in junior high school, I figured out, it's like, oh, just rush this fucker. If we all just rushed them, we could get them. This is like, they would kill probably well, way less, way less if we all just went after them. But um, I guess, and then like something like last year, or like, two years ago, I figured out really that it's like, Motherfucker, I gotta get strong so I can go charge and punch that motherfucker straight in the face uh, if I have to. Like, the first thing I'm doing is, like, doing whatever. Maybe hiding, maybe waiting. You know, tactical shit. Um, but, for the most part, like, the attitude of just getting up, running straight towards the target, and even if there's 0% chance 
that I'm going to win. I'm still going to charge at that target for the split second that the next person gets for of life while the bullet passes through me and slows down just a little bit. I guess I'm going to have to be constrained by the battery life on this thing. It's gone down to 50. I think it was at 100 when I started. 40 minutes? Wow. <sighs> Gotta stop hitting the seasick. It's not really doing anything cognitively. I'm really tired and my lungs aren't healing. So it kind of hurts. But I've been hitting it too much. It's just, like, one, you can just hit it randomly, you get dopamine, just a little bit, that's almost imperceivable, and it's like, you barely know that you got anything from it at the level that I'm at, or you can hit the e-cig, like, you gotta wait a long time, and, like, I haven't waited a long time in such a long time, I, bloody, like, my lungs, they're fine, because I'm super healthy, and I'm a mega athlete, Okay, I'm not a mega athlete. Okay, I'm a mega athlete. No, okay, I'm mild. I'm a mild athlete. Um, I'm a mild athlete, and I heal pretty fast. Like there's toxins in this vape juice. I know that, and I know I shouldn't be bursting my nicotine receptors with more than like three to ten fucking milligrams at one time, and just like. I really want to get to a place that I can be like Alex Hermosi and just like chew my Nicorette gum and be super happy about that and just be working. Like that's where I want to be in life. It's just, but right now, I, I just recently just stopped chugging my e -sick insanely much. Like I was so freaking stressed. I, I, I hit the e -sick so much, but I was just like, I had an epiphany. It's like, this doesn't do anything. I don't need to give into the search. I am a new person. And so, like, I've been hitting it last. And there isn't this intense desire to hit the e cig all the time. I just leave it in the room where I last left it and start bringing it with me. Um, but yeah, I, I shouldn't be bursting my nicotine receptors out like this. Like, at some point, I gotta heal from all the drug use of nicotine. And I really want to just have normal nicotine receptors again. And I never will, whatever that means. I'll take psychedelics, I'll do running, I'll do whatever weird thing that grows the brain because my brain is constantly restructuring itself. I'm always trying to restructure my brain. And from the freaking porn, I figured out that it's like, oh, I have, from all these podcasts and shit, I have all the information I need to take drugs and supplements and exercise and meditate and run and cure myself of just not, it's weird. Like I wasn't a pervert that, I wasn't a pervert. I didn't act perverse, I didn't think perverse. It was like when I was watching the porn that's when it was perverse, but other than that, like, I wasn't, well, I used to have dreams, I used to have fantasies, um, and those would get me straight to sleep, because, like, they were, like, the greatest fantasies in the world, and... I don't know, I'm just glad that I'm a virgin, and I, I think I would feel a lot more guilty if I had had sex um, I think there's something still essentially innocent about me and I want to hold on to that for as long as I can and I kind of have orders to hold on to that but So, my Christmas. 
sat around and we actually had one of the best times ever. I actually gained a lot of respect from my parents because they got to see me interact with someone else. But my brother's friend came over and we just had this amazing conversation. Like I would say something creative and offer up something and then he'd say something amazing. He was like a security analyst or like some, he worked for some security company. And he, he like did online crime investigations. And like he was just this really smart, brilliant guy. We talked about like dogs and just our dogs and how they lived. And I don't know, there's other things, but I don't need to get into it all too much. We had a dinner, had some like ham and some greens, this green s stuff that was kind of sweet, like spinach or what else that was sweet like uh and cheesy or something like that i don't really know i don't think it was cheesy um beets are this really good cut of meat um these ribs or i could took the ribs there was other stuff but this really cool cut of meat um and like i had christmas i us and Potato, potato mash, whatever, mashed potatoes, um, and, like, open up these presents, and, like, it's always been that Mr. Tyler always gets all the presents, and I got a speaker, a jacket, a pair of pants, another pair of pants, some short shorts, um, athletic shorts, I really like wearing those, um, because they're just, like, the best thing for an athlete to wear, like, they're comfy, really comfy, like, my legs don't shave. <sighs> Christmas is, like, Fa la 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 la. I was uh, out there and people were talking about me. Like I was on Discord and I was running around. I just like ran like four or five miles around the neighborhood over and over. And like I was talking on Discord and like people were talking about how they've changed their opinion of me. Yeah. And thinking about it now, that's mostly just subconscious things. Wait, no. The biggest difference was I heard the people at very different volumes and very distinct volumes. And... Like, I've been wondering about that mystery for, like, a year or two. It's like, how many people can I hear and how much is schizophrenia? I didn't even know I had schizophrenia until I got to this new house. 